it's been a long time since I played Homeworld, but we're back with Deserts of Karak, which came out in 2016 when I was busy with other things and passed up, but four years later finally got around to it because it was on sale on Steam and I'm in the RTS mode again, so I thought why not, let's try it. So I played through the whole game blind and I really liked it, but there's this mission here, the Whispering Gallery, that I got stuck on for a while, so I went back and min-maxed and optimised it and played through it and learned the whole mission and I'm quite happy with my strats and my tactics so I'm going to be outlining those with post commentary as the battle plays out and it lasts about 40 minutes so it's going to be quite long but I'll try and explain the mechanics and assume that you're not familiar with them. Here we go. Sakala, this is the Capizzi. Do you copy? Sakala receiving. Two Galsian carriers are blocking our advance. They appear to be an elite battle group of the Kahad Sajuk. We require your immediate assistance. Roger that. We're closing on your position now. Prepare for allied contacts. Capizzi out. Positioned here. Ready all combat groups to support Allied fleet. Watch for friendlies. Capizzi, we're under fire. Requesting support. Coordinates confirmed. Alright, so the name of the game here is to get as much support as possible to their carrier before it dies. Everything that matters happens at that carrier. If it dies, and it's taking all the aggro at the moment, that's a fail state. You can't position your carrier beside it, but what you can do is get your carrier as close as possible on this side of the valley. So that's what I try and do. I'm setting up some resource collectors there to get me the valuable resource that we need to make, especially aircraft, which I'm going to use to strafe with the fighters and bomb and run with the bombers. They've got a battle cruiser at the front tanking right now and if you arrive there quickly with support frigates you can actually repair it and keep it alive. It's the only proper battle cruiser on this side. You can't build your own in this mission yet. What you can do though is capture their cruisers which is something I'm always trying to do. You have one unit that can steal their ships like the salvage corvettes in Homeworld 1 or the marine frigates or infiltrator frigates of Homeworld 2. You have Rachel Sajet, and she has a hacking ability, and you have to upgrade her so she can capture cruisers, which is what I do just there. That takes 30 seconds, that's enough. And I'm spamming strike craft and bombers. You can have 5 wings of strike craft and 3 bombers, so that's 8 different sorties that you can have going, being cycled. 5 strafes with fighters and 3 bombing runs, and what you're trying to do is just take off, unload your munitions, and then land and cycle that as efficiently as possible on good targets. Send off all your ordnance as rapidly as possible, as efficiently as possible. Especially these railguns, iron cannon frigates, the equivalent of. Homeworld 1 and 2 had assault frigates and iron cannon frigates, but in this game you have armoured assault vehicles and railguns. And the railguns are lagging behind the assault vehicles there. Here comes the strafes of the fighters. And they've got a cruiser right at the back there. That's a bit like the Vagor battle cruiser from Homeworld 2. It's got a really powerful main gun, but it's kind of fragile and inflexible. Difficult to deploy properly because it's quite a glass cannon. The battle cruiser on this side is really tanky and robust, and it has short range high caliber guns that shred frigates. Not frigates, heavy ships. But it's slow and it can easily be taken on at standoff ranges by their guerrilla tactics units. It's kind of like the GDI versus Nod in Command and Conquer. The Coalition, our side, has tanky units that are really solid, but their units are more skirmishy. They stand off and they harass. So you need to maintain cohesion really well as the Coalition. Unit positioning is really important. 
but with the galaxy and the enemies, it's all about timing and standing off carefully. We've kind of got a front forming now. We've got iron cannons, railguns to the right, allied railguns, and then we've got a battle cruiser here that I'm supporting. And they've got two cruisers now. It's difficult to separate these to capture them. It's really tough. It's so easy for them to just get shot in the back while they're being captured and die. And we have a cruise missile ability that I haven't gotten yet, but that would have been a good target for it if I wanted to do that. I'm trying to get a bomb and run there, but oh no, it didn't fire. It didn't drop the bomb, so that would have been perfect. That was such a sweet target. But here comes the cruise missile. That's like a mini nuke. So that just wipes out an entire region. Boom. And now there's a cruiser at the front. That is estranged. That I can try and capture. And as soon as I go for it, it gets shot to stop it from capturing it. Which sucks. I don't think I make it. Look at how well I'm doing to repair it. I'm almost sneaking it away. Nearly. And that would have been the first proper ship of the line. Main battle tank cruiser. Oh man. Yeah, it's so frustrating doing that. Like you, you manage to cut it off and you try to get the hack in. And you use resources to do it. And then it just gets shot in the back by units that are at standoff distance. Further back. And the battle cruiser died there, I think. Our battle cruiser. So now we're totally exposed. But we're doing quite well here. I'm sending out all these strafes and bombing runs. And I'm supporting well. So everything to the left there is getting wiped out. Our carrier is really far forward, so there's not much transit time to get to the front. So I've got five wings of strike, strike craft fighters that I'm constantly cycling, doing a lot of damage with. I've also got bombers. Yeah, and there's those missile salvos from the other carriers. If you don't support well enough, they just attrition the allied carrier down so quickly. And that, combined with all this anti-capo ship shit pouring in from the front, means it's game over really easily. Look at that. Everything is just focusing. It's really hard to spread the damage out. You have to be really careful with your positioning. And I'm calling in a bombing run on that artillery cruiser up to the left there. That thing does area of effect damage and when you've got a lot of units support each other like this, they make such sweet targets for that shit. It's really frustrating to have all your real guns just get wiped out by a salvo from an artillery cruiser like that. And now they're building up momentum, they're getting mass. So I need to start taking these out. They've got heavy real guns at the back there that have really good range. They have the best range units. We have units that are really tanky and that have really useful abilities like that smoke. And look at what I'm doing there. I'm making a line of smoke so I can send the cruiser through it and actually steal it this time. It's looking really good. Sneaked out. That smoke ability is so powerful. But that took a lot of my attention and resources and now they've built up some mass at the front and they're just accumulating. And I've got a support frigate there that arrives and starts healing up. So I've secured it. Got the first cruiser. Could be possible to get two at this stage if everything goes perfectly and you get really lucky, but I managed one. And look at that, the siege cruiser's chasing me. And all the firepower is being concentrated really well. So I've got EMPs going off as well, so I'm paralyzing their units. I've got bombers, strike craft coming in, strafing, bombing running. Look at all the craft taking off and landing. And I've got four resource collectors back here with one support frigate, so I'm making sure I can build strike craft. And yeah, I'm just smoking in a line there to save all my assault craft, assault ships. And they've now got two cruisers there, so I'm going to have to take out one of them and maybe try and steal another one. And that may be it. It looks like there's nothing behind, so survived. No, wait, there comes more. But yeah, that's it. That's how you do it. I didn't realise that I could actually send units through the valley 
when I first played this mission and I kept losing and getting really frustrated, but yeah, knowing that I can send all my landcraft through totally changes it. I like the bombers, but they die so easily. And that AoE missile fire, fuck's sake, it, it damages all the ships in a radius around the carrier. It has a big AoE, so you've got to be really careful there. I'm trying to make a front now. I've got four railguns, four assault tanks, and two AA. So I'm trying to spread them out and make a line. And I've got four support frigates that can heal, and one of them's just pushed out in front recklessly. So I've got to be careful there. But I think that's it. I think I've pulled off. And I've got idle resource collectors there. And what I'm trying to do here is bring the carrier back around to get more resources because I can't really build anything and the pressure's off so I need to start focusing on pushing in from the left with the carrier. Seems like I handled it. It's possible to keep the battle cruiser alive right up until now but it dies. Sometimes the damage just spikes and before you know it, it's gone. I think I built scanners at this point. I can see really far now. Why can I see really far? Aircraft. But yeah, that looks like it. Seems like the pressure's off. And I kept all of my landcraft alive. I've got all four railguns, I've got both the AAs, and I've got the four tanks. So that was pretty good. I don't think I lost any aircraft. Maybe I did. They're usually what dies when the pressure starts to mount. It's usually the aircraft that you deploy to rescue the situation that start getting taken out when you lose control. And here's the carrier pushing up. It's quite tanky and robust. The carriers are like the battle cruisers of the battlefield, really. The single strongest unit is the carrier if you allocate its power properly. Yeah, I've got. I think I've got seven support cruisers there, so I have a lot of repairing capacity. And there's the cruiser that I stole. It's got a really powerful main gun that runs the entire length of the ship. And it can one shot or two shot most frigates. So if you position that on a cliff, which is something I really want to try and do in this mission, it can start sniping units. As it gains XP, it gains range. And if you can accumulate several of them experienced, you can deliver immense firepower at serious range. Yeah, artillery cruisers too. There's a lot of cliffs that you can take on this mission. I really like the map design for this one. So you can capture the enemy units which are good at standoff and have long range and position them on cliff edges and have artillery cruisers behind them and directly firing into groups taking out clusters and that seems to work really well because you've got specific precise damage from the cruisers that you capture and also the railguns that they have. They have railguns with specific modes that mean you can do a lot of damage with just frigates. So I tried to capture a... I tried to capture one of their carriers, their construction cruisers, so I could make frigates. And then I think I positioned them on the cliffs and they do really well for me in this one. Production carrier, yeah. I think I captured this one. It's got our allied strike craft trailing it. Do I send her forward? Yeah, I think I do. I think I pull this off. So there's the hack ability, it costs RUs. There's CUs and RUs. RUs are the most valuable. They're the blue ones. And doing this capture ability requires the blue ones, so it's not free. So you hit it with a hack, and then you repair it. 
and you can do that with you can do both with this, with one unit, which is nice. So she's ideal for this. She hacks and then she repairs, and she moves quite fast as well. So perfect for stealing units. But there's only one over. You can only hack one unit at a time. And they've sent out two battle cruisers now. So that's what they do after you've saved them. They build a couple of battle cruisers and they push up on the right. And I like these situations in these games. It's kind of a rare scenario having an ally. And it's quite a challenge, a unique challenge to try and marshal the ally effectively to support them. Because with AIs, usually they're just quantity over quality in the sense that they spam units that they don't use very well. And it's up to you, as their human ally, to make units and use them in ways that support that weakness. So that's what I did with the support frigates by repairing the battlecruiser. The battlecruiser just sits at the front tanking forever and wait, waiting to die. But you can render it really impervious if you just have a few support frigates constantly repairing it while it tanks. Um, I was sent in these support frigates to help with the repair job, but this thing's moving too fast. And that's it. I've got another one of those cruisers. Really long range cruisers. So I'm gonna have two of them on the left flank. And look at how slowly these battle cruisers are moving up. These take ages to get there. And they've got two carriers that are hiding at the back of the map. They pull back. So you take the high ground on them and try to surround them and slowly grind them down. It's like a, a tug of war. There's so much stuff going on. Both sides have a really high capacity for producing units. You've already seen, seen how immense the spam was when you had to rescue their carrier. Oh wait, that's a production carrier that I captured there. Yeah, that's what lets me make the frigates. So you make the heavy railguns, and then you toggle the ability that lets them do extra damage. I mean, longer range damage. And they can snipe. And then you put them on the high ground, with long lines of sight. And on this map especially, they do really well. And yeah, they're taking a while. It's kind of weird because those battle cruisers can actually pull back. So they go all the way around the right side of the map, getting close to their carriers, and then if they actually get to the carriers, they'll often just pull back right at the last second and refrain from killing them. It's almost like they want you and the enemy to cancel each other out. Fucking sucks. So you rescue them, and you give them a situation where they can easily just snatch the victory, and they cock out. It's really annoying. Oh yeah, and here's the missile ability. So I'm firing at the back of the formation, and then I'm focused on the front of the formation with the strike craft and the carrier, and then I'm trying to capture that last cruiser. I'm trying to leave one cruiser there, and I think it works. Yeah, and there she's coming. So that's all the stuff at the back dead, the second cruiser dead, and now at the front it's just assault frigates and A. And the only anti-capital that they've got is that cruiser, which I'm trying to capture, so it's really good. I can get two of those now, that'll be the second one. Yep, perfectly handled. And they've got a load of strike craft coming in. So now I'm focusing on armor, shields, and repairability on the carrier. So I'm being defensive. Reducing my damage output. And I accidentally EMP'd my own cruiser there, which sucks while well, I'm trying to capture it while it's vulnerable. I tried to just EMP the frigates, but damn, collateral on the cruiser that I'm trying to capture as well. See what I mean? They're just sitting there, they're not pushing forward, they're not being aggressive enough. And the strike craft are just being a nuisance at the moment, they can't do anything. 
and I've got one siege cruiser, artillery cruiser. That does really well within direct fire. And there it comes, any second, I'll have that second cruiser. I'm pushing up now with the resourcing. Yep, here it comes. Perfect. So now I've captured two of these really good long-range cruisers. Good for hit and run, good for standoff. And I've got a production cruiser as well. And I'm spamming real guns now. The heavy ones. And these cliffs are just ahead over there now, so I've made it. I'm just waiting on our allies to push up and make a second front on the right. And these guys have glitched out. Use cruise missiles against the Gaussian forces. I did that. I actually used one. What the fuck? At least one. I think I used a couple. I meant to get a second objective to support those AAVs, but I've glitched out for some reason. Yeah, I'm in position now. So I've got one cruiser on the cliff edge. Perfect line of sight, perfect height damage bonus. And I've got the second one coming forward. And look at that, just wiping out frigates. It will take damage because it is quite glass cannony. But it automatically repairs. So all you have to do is pull back. You have to just time it right and you'll do well. And there's the indirect fire coming in as well. So I'm pulling back now. I'm trying to capture that third one. I don't want to do damage to it. If I can get the hack off, I'll have a third one and that'll be really nice. And they're taking forever, they're just Operation. fucking around. I think I destroyed this one by accident, I'm not sure though. Yeah, that's not a big deal. I just need to make sure that none of my ships are going to get hit by the blast. There's the real guns coming out. I've got three of them already. They move really slowly when they're in that long range mode. Oh man, a lot of shit there. Yeah, I led them with the cruise missile. This is gonna be good. And do I capture this? Look at it spazzing out. Holy shit. Oh yeah, and that secured it, I think. So that's the third one captured. Really nice. And I'm putting them back on the cliffs, and I'm putting my artillery cruiser right behind. And I've got my real guns there. Five of them. In long range mode. I should have had them push further up, I think. They also gain range when they get XP, just like these honor guards, these long range cruisers. They were getting shot through the rock. I wondered for a while if, if that was because of railguns, if that's an intended feature. Because in some games, railguns can go through walls and through the ground and stuff. But apparently it's a glitch or unintended. I think, I'm not sure, I think so. Weapon systems online. Weapon range systems currently active. Carrier so I've got a scanner now. I built a scanner and that gives me a really long line of sight. And that couples perfectly with these cruisers because now I can snipe. And I'm starting to develop some serious firepower up there. I'm going to have three of these long range cruisers. So I'm going to be able to out damage everything that can be sent against me. With these units that have really long range, a weakness is often that they can be overrun and overwhelmed once they close the distance and fight inside your range. But if you can accumulate them, then it's kind of like a cliche with English longbowmen in Age of Empires 2, and that's the earliest example I can think of. But if you spam long range, eventually nothing can counter the long range because nothing can get inside the range. Everything dies before it gets inside its own range. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to just accumulate a lot of long range and I'm cycling them to protect them. So once one of them starts to get close to being dead, I'll pull it back and let it regen slash repair and then send it back to the front. And it looks like all the stuff at the right is pushing forward finally. I've got two artillery cruisers, I've got three 
honor guards Go with ahead. the long range. We'll I've got a production cruiser that I captured, and I'm spamming long range ahead. frigates with it. I've got a carrier in position, so everything ready. is ready. I'm just waiting for the shit on the right to push up, and they're, f they're doing it really slowly. I was really struggling to get anything remotely like this the first time I played through this mission. I was just... All the stuff they sent was just overwhelming. I've got two artillery cruisers that I'm sending up the right as well to help on the right. There's a really big plateau that you can put them on and they have a really nice indirect fire shot at both the carriers. So you can really tighten the noose, close in. And I'm catching up with my resourcing. You need to break these ship hulls and then try and get artifacts for passive buffs for the whole fleet. So that's something I was thinking about here. And yeah, look at that perfect positioning. It's the ideal scenario to just have these lined up on a cliff like this. This is part of why I went back and did this, because I had it in my mind that I wanted to do this and it would have been perfect. And look at this. It's like an ideal scenario. There's, there's almost nothing they can do. All they could conceivably do is use aircraft to counter this. Even if they have their own siege cruisers, artillery cruisers, they would need to have more than me, and I've already got two. And I have really good line of sight here as well. So they can't see me, but I can see them. Yep, it's perfect setup. At least on the left. On the right, I am hampered by the passivity of the AI taking too fucking long. And yeah, I'm demolishing the hulls, shipwrecks. Missile barrage detected. They're targeting both the Sakala and the Kapisi. Initiate evasive action. This used to be called shipbreakers. And that's where it comes from. Salvaging the pieces of the ships that have been crash landed on the planet. It's kind of like with Type E Range Sun or Type E Room Wars. The theme of the game is based around the resource collecting aspect of it. It's central to the theme. That's where all the technology lies and all the resources for shipbuilding. Just like in the Tiberian Sun universe, where the Tiberium itself is the source of a lot of technology opportunities. Because in this, you're basically salvaging old technology from other civilizations and using it to make your own fleet more combat effective. Yeah, they're pushing up there on the right. They've started to funnel their shit at our ally on the right, and I'm left with not much to do here on the left. Reporting. It's so tempting to abandon this perfect defensive position with caution. We and start pushing the board. into these carriers, but in they're really tanky, and they have a really high production capacity, so they can spam units in moments and overwhelm you. It just pours out. So I'm just trying to safely inch my way forward relying on these battle cruisers to give me the best opportunity. Because if these battle cruisers move forward on their own, they'll die quite quickly because they'll just get overwhelmed by all the shit. But if I push forward without them, I'll not have their armor and their high HP helping me out. So I really need to wait for them on the right to give me an opportunity that I can push on. Battle cruisers do a lot of good damage. Armor vehicle taking effective fire. They have high caliber guns that have Strike decent range, destroyed. but they can get outranged by enemy real guns and enemy cruisers, so they really need to be supported well. If you can close the distance with them and just gradually overwhelm, they'll do really well, because once they're inside, inside the range of the enemy and their turrets start firing, full speed. They do a lot of damage very quickly. What am I doing there? I'm sending a cruiser down through the valley for some reason. 
can't remember why I did that. And yeah, this is a bad situation. I'm taking AOE on all of my units there. Do I manage to save them? Yeah, I think I do. I still think I've got all my units. I've got four, four of those. I think I've got four railguns. And I've still got two A's, I think. So I've done really, really well to make this very, very clean. I've also got the units I captured, so... A few to non-existent losses. And a lot of gains. Nah, I lost one of the A's, the missile batteries. And they're pushing up for some reason. So they've sent their tanks out in front of the cruisers. It's really dumb. I think it's deliberate that their cruisers are so passive. I think it's meant to play into the storyline with the nature of the faction. And yeah, I just took out the rear with that. That was nice. So everything at the front I can take on in the standoff and everything at the back just get wiped out by a cruise missile. And I've still got that hint even though I used it. I've used the cruise missile but it still says the hint. And god damn there's so much shit pouring into my cruisers and my railguns on the front. Look at all that crap in seconds. Look at that. All that. And I built a scanner up here. Build another one. And I'm positioning an artillery cruiser so it has a good shot on all the stuff down there at the left carrier. And I'm pushing forward now. Oh, look at that. Look at that fusillade on the cliffs. God damn. They took damage there, but they also repair it. See their health bars going up? And that really takes the strain off in terms of micromanagement and logistics. When those units can automatically heal. <laughs> and yeah, you can see me getting frustrated there at those battle cruisers. Fucking hell. I'm like, fuck, push forward. Pussies. Fucking hell. But this is nice. All these units coming through the valley into my railguns. Both their perfect firing positions. And once those start getting XP, their range will go up even more. Look at this, the battle cruisers are just sitting there, god damn it. I'm forced to stand off. Really annoying. And they're just walking into this. Oh man, it's glorious. Look at that, I'm holding their entire carrier's divisions at bay with just five or six or seven railguns well positioned. That's supposed to go through the valley and cripple me. If they were allowed to get through, they would have really made some problems at the back, but oh, they just get met by railguns with extreme range firing from a really good vantage point. Really satisfying. That's peak homeworld desert Sakarak right there, that shit. So I'm really matching them unit for unit really well. I'm, I'm handling the threat by myself at this point. All the channels are controlled. And I'm just admiring this shit. This is so good. But I think I've decided at this point that enough is enough and it's time to push on this and make something happen here. Because my allies' battle cruisers are not going to make it happen, so it's up to me. So I'm sending an artillery cruiser forward with the carrier. And I think I'm going to be shunting, or whatever it's called, the carrier's power tactically for whatever is the most opportune configuration. And there's the cruise missile going out. So that's to soften them up. And look at that. Almost killed a cruiser. It just came out, it was just produced. And they've got an artillery cruiser there. And I've lost one of my tanks that I've had this entire time until now. That sucks. Yeah, look at that. Look at all that stuff that just appeared so quickly. But yeah, they're really on the back foot now. I've got to now come down into the basin with them and meet them head on. And I've got the battle cruisers helping me a little bit. I'm trying to make them tank. I want to preserve all my units. 
because I'm going to need them if this doesn't go perfectly. And I've got one cruiser positioned really well on the other side of the valley there, firing right down into the carrier. But it's moving away I think. Alright, so now I can meet their carrier with mine head on and support it and hopefully overwhelm and take it out. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to take the carriers on one at a time. And those railguns are out of the fight back there, so I'm pushing them forward. Enemy light attack vehicle marked on approach. Alert I'm sending everything forward now. They've got one artillery cruiser right up against the cliff face for some reason. And I was thinking about capturing it there, but too late. <laughs> Did too much damage. I'm trying to keep these alive. Because they're really fragile, especially when a carrier's firepower and freshly recruited units are concentrating on damage. And this thing's backing up into me and spamming out shit, so I've got to be careful here. And this should be the coup de grace here. These seven railguns that have no aggro on them, in their long range mode, sniping units one by one by one. And that carrier's nearly done, so I think I've got this well handled. I'm shielding my cruisers behind the carrier, and oh crap, that was a nice strafe. They just got, yeah, that was collateral damage there. Nearly lost both cruisers to that shit. And I've had these artillery cruisers up at the top firing down with these mortar volleys this whole time, which has been helping a lot. And this thing is getting wrecked and spazzing out. I can't remember if this dies, but that would be really sad if it did. Hopefully it survives. And they're trying this again, they're trying this sneak through. They're trying to send stuff past, but they don't want to be doing that, they need to be dealing with me. And they've, the allies have sent units forward now, so... I can maybe push and support that, and that might be the best opportunity I'll get in terms of using my ally. And yeah, there's one carrier, so I think that's it. That's it called there, I think. So they've got one carrier left, they're at half production capacity, and now I'm just coming in for the win. But I'm playing it cautiously because I don't want to take losses. I'm still trying to be careful and play smart. And waiting for my ally to fucking help. They've got two railguns there, so... They're doing damage, but they're really fragile. If they take any aggro, they won't last long. And yeah, there's one gone. And I should have been supporting them. Could have kept them in the fight. I think I should have just sent everything towards it there. I would have had a really good chance to finish this carrier if I just sent everything forward. And I'm doing it now. And I'm sending all my air support forward as well. And they've got a, an artillery cruiser coming out the back. But I'm taking out my cruisers. Railguns need to be faster, so I'm taking off the standoff ability. I'm going to try and get them over that little bump in the terrain for line of sight. They fire while they move, I think, so that should go well. But they're really fragile, so I'm trying to keep them away from the aggro. And that's it. Let's get over to go. Forward or backward is fucked. Still firing its missiles. Oh man, I just took a direct hit from that. Fucking hell. I think I lost one of my real guns there to that shit. I've got an artillery cruiser right alongside it. That sucks. And that thing up there has been firing that whole time. I think it got a lot of XP. I think it's high ranked. Just by setting up there on that plateau and firing down. And that's it. Nice. And look at those cruisers, those battle cruisers that just sat there and watched. Yeah, that's really premonitive. We have defeated the gods at Juke's camp.
carriers. Let's move to open ground and get out of this canyon. Bring engines to full. And that's how I optimized, cracked the mission that gave me the most trouble in Desert Sakarak. Personal log, Captain Roman Sajet, Expedition Carrier Capisi. The Sedin, a loathsome kit if ever there was one. Arrogant, self-righteous. Mashad, the Sakala captain, seems to have an agenda all of his own. He knows more than he's willing to share, I'm sure of it. Unfortunately, it's a tenet of war that you can't always choose your allies. How true. Truth is, we have no choice but to rely on one another. The Galsian keep throwing wave after wave at us, escalating their attacks, unafraid to sacrifice their forces to hold us at bay. Thankfully, the commanders at Tyr have confirmed our resupply. Without it, we will not be able to complete our expedition. If you appreciate the videos and want to spur me on, you can do that on my Patreon page. Special thanks to Matteo Olivetti, Nerdington, The Rode 451, and Halcyon.